two identical solid state drives mounted in two different PCs suffered data corruption within the same week. And despite having backup configured, I still lost data. Was this pure misfortune or could I have somehow prevented this incident? This is Savvy Layman. As is the case with all accidents, they rarely happen due to a single failure. There often is a series of events that go very wrong. I started getting suspicious when my daily PC began freezing and rebooting unexpectedly. I first blamed my aggressive overclocking right off the bat. But despite disabling both GPU and CPU overclock, the symptoms persisted. So I thought maybe RAM was the culprit, but even when I let Memtest64 run for hours, he threw no error. Only then, I resorted to Event Viewer. Event Viewer is a very useful tool as it can reveal issues with your Windows PC the same way a blood test can uncover diabetes or anemia. When a system failure occurs, it makes most sense to visit Windows logs, specifically the system section. I usually look for critical messages or errors, but not all errors are worth paying attention. It's always helpful to view individual messages in the context. For example, when an unexpected reboot occurs, I want to analyze what happened shortly before the crash. As you can see, many bad blocks were detected on a disk with a path device hardx 2 dr 2 But how do I figure out what physical disk is associated with this symbolic link? This is indeed tricky and I need to admit I got fooled myself and suspected a wrong disk in the beginning. I originally wanted to show you troubleshooting using Microsoft's Win OBJ utility, but I quickly realized this tool was more confusing than helpful in our little quest. So we'll stick to a simple PowerShell command today. At the present time, the faulty drive no longer resides in the PC, so in our example I will identify another physical disk in my laptop, which uses the symbolic link device harris one dr one this one, unfortunately, had some bad blocks as well. There are two physical drives installing this laptop, and hard disk one tells us we're dealing with the physical drive number one. We can now run the PowerShell command to obtain the friendly name and the serial number of this physical disk. And you can see it's ADATA XPG SX8200 Pro. As soon as I realized the drive was defect, I tried to save its data by copying files to another disk. While it worked for some files, the system froze when trying to access others. That means the disk was clearly faulty. The interesting thing is that although CheckDisk reported some errors on one of the faulty drives, it discovered none on the other. And there were no warnings or failures reported by Smart. And that is pretty scary. I was like, whatever, I have a backup. I couldn't be more wrong. When it comes to taking backups, there are multiple options. One can take a backup of a system disk, a partition, or a specific folder or file. Full disk backups sound great, but there is usually a ton of junk on the system drive and that's a waste of backup storage space. For that reason, I usually handpick specific important folders, such as users, which I want to backup. I personally use Aomi a backupper, but the concept is very similar for any other backup software. And here comes the catch. A few months ago, I added a new crucial SATA SSD to my system. Back then, I already had two NVMe SSDs installed in there. One contained the system C volume, the other the data D volume. But when I added this new SATA SSD, Windows reassigned the letter D for the volume on the new drive and used E for the existing NVMe SSD. See where this is going? Photo D Savvy Layman suddenly contained no useful data as it was effectively remapped to E drive. I have been backing up an empty folder for months without ever realizing it. How could I be so dumb? The sad thing about the failed ADATA disk is that it wasn't even two years old and according to Smart, it still had 98% of its remaining life. So what went wrong? It's hard to take an educated guess without involving a failure analysis lab but I have two working assumptions. First, ADATA introduced at least four revisions to SX8200 Pro. These brought changes to the controller as well as the NAND chips. It is clear some revisions contained inferior components in terms of performance, but maybe also lifespan. It's 
very suspicious to see two drives fail within a single week. Second, heat management of NVMe SSDs often sucks, especially due to AC controllers running too hot. I made a video on this topic some two years ago. Though SX8200 Pro came with a thin copper heat spreader, I found it insufficient. When the SSD is used in a computer with poor to nor airflow, such as laptop, the heat spreader effectively increases the operating temperature of the NAND memory chips that are placed on the same side as the controller. This can lead to premature failure of the memory ICs. Also, SSDs with 1TB or more capacity have their NAND chips soldered to both sides of the PCB. So even when I use the heatsink which came with the motherboard, it only touches one side of the SSD. Moreover, when inserting the drive into the top M.2 slot, it may be exposed to tons of hot air exhausted from the graphics card. This is far from ideal. An important follow-up to every root cause analysis is to identify steps which can prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. In my case, I decided to switch to a premium TLC SSD with high TBW rating. I went with 2TB high-performing PCIe Gen 4 drive from a respectable brand, namely Seagate Farcuda 530. I did consider Western Digital Black SN850X, but Farcuda won with its unbeatable 2550TBW rating. Western Digital, on the other hand, only had 1200. I equipped the drive with a double-sided third-party heatsink. I'm also committed to performing regular restore tests to ensure the backups are properly configured and consistent. What do I do with the faulty drives, you ask? Since they're not completely dead, I didn't want to just throw them away. So I purchased this NVMe SSD enclosure with USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 interface. I often need to transfer large files from one PC to another, and this is a much faster option than doing it over the Ethernet at my place. Of course, I still find the A data drives unreliable, so I never move original files to these disks, instead I just copy files and only delete them once I verify their integrity on the target system. By the way, the NVMe enclosure runs very hot. So guess what? One A data drive inside the enclosure failed on me once again. Long story short, don't cheap out on PC hardware and keep it cool. As for me, I don't regret this data loss incident, because I was able to recover at least some data, but moreover I deliberately took precautions which made my storage systems more resilient than before. Thanks for watching and have a nice one.